Hello, lads, lasses, lingerie, one and all. How are you? I hope you're feeling wonderful. I certainly am. Or at least I was until I discovered what I'm about to talk about now. Something curious has arisen, and I'm not talking only about the revelation of a new variant in the virus, the fact that the rules for the pandemic may be restricted, the fact that there may or may not have been secret parties going on in number 10 Downing Street where the rest of us were in lockdown. I am simply referring to something that's going on on television and also online. It seems that a certain occasion known as Black History Month is just coming up. Which I understand on some level, but I don't understand it on another level. I understand it in an American context that you might want to have a month dedicated to yourself that you belong to an oppressed class. And obviously, a black people historically have been slaves in America. There's been segregation, there's been hardship, there's been police brutality in the past as well. There's also been presidency, of course. And so I can understand why, having been a member of such a group, you might want to have a month all to yourself to say, look, we've been through a lot of tough times, but at least we can get to the top now. We can be great at music, we can have great art. We could even go to the White House now, make it the Black House. That's a bad pun, but it, you know what I mean. America has come a long way, so has the rest of the world. And so I, on that level, I can understand why you might want a thing like Black History Month, but on another level, I don't understand it, because even if black people were to have a month all to themselves, they stay the same colour for the other 11 months of the year. The thing that has generated controversy, though, is not the fact that it's Black History Month on the 12th of February. It'll probably be the 13th, 14th, maybe even the 15th by the time I have this wretched video up. But it doesn't matter because this thing is still topical. There is this series or documentary that's come about which is called Everything's Gonna Be All White. And it's a very moving, dramatic piece about an elderly gentleman who just happens to be an interior designer who favours very pale walls and polar bear skin rugs, has an albino rabbit, and likes his coffee with milk in it. It's about race, alright? It's about the white race. Nothing else that has the word white in it. What's interesting about it is it generated controversy even when there was only the advert on YouTube. Nobody knew anything about it except they hated the trailer. And the trailer is what I'm going to be uh, looking at now because now the series has begun. It's still at. Just to give you an idea of how much people dislike this documentary, I can tell you, just while I'm online, everything's going to be all white. It has a 1.2 out of 10 IMDb rating. Rotten Tomatoes website puts it at, it was 5%, it's now dropped to 4%. You know how there used to be thumbs up and thumbs down signs, but they no longer have the thumbs down? Well, apparently some of them can set it so that the thumbs down signs still show. When it became apparent that nobody even liked the trailer of the documentary, let alone the documentary itself, they very courageously got rid of all the comments, so you could, they couldn't see anyone saying they disliked it, or indeed the people who did like it and then shortly after, equally courageously, removed their ability to see the thumbs down signs. But while the thumbs down signs were there, this was just a few days ago when this thing originally went up, a, a staggering 21,000 people disliked it. Even now, it's at just 2,500 who did like it. This is a very polarising thing, it's a much hated thing. Though my heritage is somewhat mixed, I'm not black, but I'm not... Um, I'm mostly white, but you know what I mean. So come on this journey with me together. We're going to be equally miserable. Have a bit of a laugh. So on the day, that is to say the 12th of February, which would have coincided with the birthday of Abraham Lincoln, who freed the slaves, and comes just a few days before what would have been the birthday of Frederick Douglass, the black abolitionist, this is what they put out there. <laughs> may trigger white people. What's interesting about this, and I, I say this with the benefit of anyone who thinks that all the thumbs downs and low ratings were because all the white supremacists ganged up together in order to sort of team up and hate on everything, mass hate, you know, as does happen occasionally, I should say that there are reams and reams of videos, you really have to look at them, of many, many black commentators on YouTube saying things like, 
I'm not a slave or a cotton picker anymore. I don't know anyone who is, and by the way, how dare you say that all my white friends are victimising me or secretly hate me, even if they don't think they do. And I'm not even strawmanning the documentary or indeed the advert for it by saying that's what they imply. I think what annoys me most about white people is when they pretend like they're the victim. <laughs> Yeah, this woman is rather interesting, for no other reason than that she is in fact of mixed heritage, you can see that visibly. It probably is a member of the black community and is treated as such in America. But what's interesting is how different cultures perceive race. The comedian and actor Stephen Fry talked about how when he went out into Kenya, this was during the Obama presidency, and said, don't you think it's wonderful that America has elected her first black president? And the Kenyans replied, well it's very nice, but of course, if Obama's family had remained in Kenya and he tried entering politics here, he would have been our first white president. And that's the point. And I realise I'm taking a bit of a risk saying this, because this, this has come shortly after Whoopi Goldberg got semi counselled on The View, where cackling hens like to talk about the news and pretend that they know what they're talking about. Following on from the other outrageous things she said, like uh, communism might be a wonderful thing, Roman Polanski is not a rapist, Kyle Rittenhouse is a murderer, Bill Cosby is innocent, or, or Donald Trump is like the Taliban. You know the sort of silly stuff. She's now saying things like the Holocaust wasn't about race, thereby becoming possibly the first person in the history of human civilization to believe that everything is about race except for Adolf Hitler. So I'm taking a risk by talking about the variances about how different people perceive race. The only reason I'm mentioning it at all is just to point out that although this woman is black in America, irrespective of how she identifies, she's still half white and would be seen as white in Africa, which is what a lot of them like to talk about, African Americans. And therefore, in the eyes of some, when she talks about white people saying they act like the victim, in some respect, she's talking about herself. Or indeed members of her own family and ancestry. What's also annoying is when they, you know, when they kill us. I understand there have been hardships, real suppression by the police on black people in America and elsewhere. What's interesting about this is that if you do a little bit of research, when there is a black criminal or a black person that is shot, it's quite often a black or Latino police officer who shoots them. And the reason you know this to be so is because we know the names of all the white police officers who shoot them dead instead. That's when Black Lives Matter starts worrying and firing up. But what also becomes outrageous in turn is how many of these race riots, which really take place in America and so on, begin to transcend in other countries that have no bearing on Jim Crow laws. Abolitionists will get, their statues will be damaged in addition to the slaveholding ones. The monuments to Nazi hunters will get vandalised as well as people who maybe were too close to the Nazis or had views like the Nazis. It's curious how this thing has brought the rest of the world into the conversation irrespective of what their relationship with the black community or indeed the world of black people may have been. What is fragile about whiteness when everything has been constructed around it? Not in sports, music and athletics. But I take the point, even if you do go, the point I made earlier about how black police officers quite often are the ones that shoot black criminals, that it was white officers that invented the police force. But I'll give you a pass on it. I don't like it, but I'll give you a free pass on it. Hang on, what does that say? What the heck does that mean? Every part of who I am has been distorted or- oh, It's the cockroach woman, Linda Sarsour. This is what I find incredible about a documentary that talks entirely about race. And I understand that they're trying to bring oppressed groups other than black people into the conversation, but they could have done a little bit of research on this person. This woman you've just looked at has Powell around with people like the Congresswoman Ilhan Omar, who surpassed the former Klansman and professional Holocaust denier, Dr. David Duke, in being the anti Semite of the year, to say nothing of getting the endorsement of people like Louis Farrakhan, who, amongst other things, made such outrageous claims as black people would be better off if they had a leader like Adolf Hitler, that Jews are comparable to termites, and that they caused HIV in Africa. And I'm not even strawmanning him. That's literally what he believes, and that's literally the sort of person that this woman hangs out with, only to come onto this documentary 
to talk about race. Every part of who I am has been distorted or criminalized. Oh, yes. Yes, most definitely, Mr. Sarsour. You have definitely not had access to presidential candidates, have you? Those pussy hat wearing bimbos definitely didn't follow your lead, and they definitely didn't hear your unapologetic speech, following which you said you wanted to wage jihad on the president. Totally criminalised with the support of none. Who could possibly question it? It's really just a bunch of white lies. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you're a marvel. You should do stand-up. Maybe you do. I don't know who you are. Storm in the Capitol! You're not patriots. You're ridiculous. Yeah, I'll give you that one. That was a ridiculous thing to do. But I do find it interesting how they kind of alternate in the public's mind from being these fierce white supremacists, dangerous people who were armed insurrectionists, actually I don't think any of them had guns, to just being ridiculous people who wore horns on their heads. And clearly they had lots of reasons for being there. You don't take selfies with guards if you're that dangerous. The guards will shoot you if they think that you are. What I do find interesting, and this is just a side note here, is that people went for the better part of four or five years of being told that a Trump was a false president and his election was stolen by the Russians. And yet uh, when claims made from the other side that Biden is a false president or an illegitimate president, that's disregarded. And without the same freedom to say it online as there was with the Russian stuff. One of the definitions of American whiteness. Yeah, this, what's interesting about the Confederate flag, if it's alongside somebody with a flag that says white power, fair enough, they probably are a person of fascistic persuasion. But what's interesting about it is how it has a curious history. The earliest Confederates were white supremacists in the sense that they wanted to preserve slavery. Now, you always get people that say that they wanted to preserve states' rights, but when you look at the memoirs of Confederate fighters, they don't tend to talk about that. It is interesting, on a side note, that there weren't really black Confederates. There were black assistants to Confederates who assisted with the cooking and the cleaning, even a few that handled the rifles and shot people on the Unionist side. Because there were black slave owners as well. When they became free, they'd own slave themselves. Not in the same way. Sometimes they would do it just to remove their wives and relatives. Some free black people did become slave owners as well. That isn't generally talked about, but it's worth mentioning. And they used to be welcomed, actually, on Confederate uh, memorial service, black and white together. But generally speaking, it was a white supremacist organisation in the sense they wanted to preserve slavery. But they weren't necessarily anti-immigrant. That's the other interesting thing about all this. And then, a little bit later, during the Second World War, loads of GIs who'd gone to fight real white supremacists in Nazi Germany came back and flew the Confederate flag as a form of southern pride, rather than being racist themselves. They probably didn't have the modern consciousness of egalitarianism, but they were anti-fascist. And then during the 70s and 80s, various punk and rock bands, or individuals such as Billy Idol, Bret Michaels, people like that, used to use the Confederate flag on their guitars or on their paraphernalia, not because they believed in either slavery or southern pride, but as a sign of rebelliousness. In a similar way that Sid Vicious used to use a swastika. He was not a Nazi, but it was a sign of subversion. He was satirising what the symbol stood for. But then once again, during the Obama presidency, he happened to mention the fact that he didn't like the Confederate flag, and why would he? Proud Southerners who only ever saw the flag as a symbol of Southern pride, not as a symbol of, of pro-slavery, started using it and, and resenting it. Other people used it in order to troll him, in a similar way to those punk bands, and others who were Nazis or neo-fascists would use it instead in a way that would have horrified those GIs that fought against the people in the Second World War. So you have many different interpretations of the Confederate flag, and as well as contradictory opinions onto what it stood for, even amongst the Confederate fighters themselves, black and white, and Native American. We'll get on to those later. And, and all these things I know perfectly well, despite coming from completely the opposite side of the world, where the Confederate flag has no bearing and no history and no attachment. But there's still a lot of nuance attached to it. I guarantee you not one of the things I mentioned will be referenced in the documentary. And neither is it within this... Advertisements. The definitions of American whiteness is ignorance. 
Okay, but is ignorance exclusive to white supremacists, I wonder? Or white people generally? White people, we are not your problem. You are. Well, that sounded perfectly reasonable and not particularly threatening, didn't it? Should white people today feel any responsibility for slavery? <laughs> Hell yeah. Okay, I see why you might think that. What if you're a white person whose ancestors were white abolitionists? What if your great-great-great-grandfather fought on the Unionist side during the Civil War? What if you're a white person who gained citizenship after slavery or segregation? What if you just became a naturalised citizen and you're white just yesterday? What if you're white but you're from a place like Poland, somewhere that didn't have much connection with slavery and who certainly was very much oppressed by the Nazis? Or somewhere like Sweden, which had, had even less connection with empire or colonisation? Now, since we're dividing people, let's look a little further. What if you're an American citizen whose heritage is in fact Brazilian or Arab or some other country that used black slavery considerably longer than any white country? Should Americans who are Brazilian or Arab also feel responsibility for what other people did? What if you're half black and half white? Should half of you feel responsible or should the other half of you feel oppressed? And what if, this is even more interesting, what if you're a black person who came from one of the African countries that sold those slaves to the white man? You see what happens when you divide people by tribe rather than seeing them as individuals. White Jesus or black Jesus? Neither. Jesus was not white. No, but he wasn't a black African either. He was a Middle Eastern Jew. If you look at artwork from the Greek, Armenian, or Eastern Orthodox Church, the chances are he looked more like that because the hair is shorter and the skin is slightly darker. More tanned than me. And my heritage is kind of Anglo-Indian and Portuguese. Ain't no way Jesus walked around with blonde hair and blue eyes. The Italian and French Renaissance artists portrayed him as white and long-haired because that's what they looked like. And you may consider this an image of white supremacy if you like, but by that same token, you'll have to say the same of, say, Buddha statues who look Chinese, even though the original Buddha was an Indian. If you see nothing wrong with that, then you've answered your own dilemma. If you do, then you're still silly, but at least you're consistent. White culture fears the end of the world. For us as native people, the end of the world already happened, like, multiple times. Yeah, I'm not going to say that they didn't, but what's interesting about this in connection with the conversation that is mostly about black people, but it's mostly about white people, but it's narrated mostly by black activists, despite the appearance of uh, people like Sarsour, is that there were loads of Native Americans who owned slaves as well. And before they were sold black slaves, different tribes enslaved each other. So if we're going to engage in collective guilt, let's look there too. Loads of Native Americans actually fought alongside my countrymen against George Washington, favouring the British Empire over George Washington's independence. And it was white people like the French and the Spanish who helped George Washington win against us. Not many people know that. Bring that statue down. I don't have a problem with pulling down statues. I've talked about why I think it's generally a bad idea to pull all of them down in the reckless manner that many of them were. Next man who actually talks about it, it just sounds so ridiculous that only a Disney character could sum it up in the way that I'm thinking. Which one should I use? Bring that statue down. Put up a TCBY yogurt or something. Everybody can get behind. You are a sad, strange little man, and you have my pity. Farewell. Yeah, that's the one. The truth has to be told about history. Okay, but people of colour are individuals. All of them have different thoughts. And as I said before, they're very irritated by all this race-baiting stuff as well. There's always hope. No saying we don't give up. Loads of hope. That first and only really optimistic sign within this whole thing, and I agree with it entirely. That should be what the 4% liking rate is all about. This is a wild place, y'all. It's a wild place. I know Harriet and Frederick be up there just like, what is they gonna do? Oh, yes, for sure. Most definitely, madam. Um, last Thursday, I think. So yes, this is not the first time I've discussed race. I did a long time ago make a video about how a neo-Nazi reacted towards gender fluidity, as it's now being called, and I made fun of that Nazi as well. This is not necessarily as evil as that, but it's fully as divisive in its own way. Every bit as race-baity 
And especially when you're going to use people like Sarsour in that thing and, and say that people of a certain skin colour are dependent on what the ancestors of themselves and other people might have done. I suppose this is something of a record for me putting up so many videos in the space of less than half a month. Anyway, that's just my little take on this rather evil documentary. I'm, it gives me hope in humanity that people from across the racial and political spectrum are, are opposing this. And probably nobody's going to see mine in the great sea of reactions, but I hope you enjoyed if you're familiar. Thanks very much. Ta-ta!